All right, so you're thinking about Scotland, huh? Well, we're diving into your travel plans today, specifically Aberdeen and Edinburgh. Two very different cities. Totally. Yeah. And this travel piece you sent, Scammerdeen versus Enchanting Edinburgh, I mean, it's pretty clear which one this traveler preferred. It's a bold statement to lead with, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. But let's see if Aberdeen deserves that Scammerdeen label or if it's hiding something special. Right. Where do they even start? Well, ironically, they start with Aberdeen's biggest highlight, Dunatar Castle. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they were completely blown away. Called it awe-inspiring, perched on a kaif overlooking the North Sea. Wow. It's got serious history, too. Denadar Castle is where they hid the Scottish crown jewels from Oliver Cromwell. Can you imagine? Ooh, it's the intrigue. I'd be looking for those secret passageways for sure. Exactly. But the experience, according to them, goes beyond the castle walls. They said, imagine, after soaking up centuries of history, you stroll along that rugged coastline. Okay, yeah, the salty air, the wind, I can practically feel it. What a change of pace from, well, Aberdeen itself. It is quite the contrast. Our traveler, while they were charmed by old Aberdeen. Old Aberdeen. Yeah, they called it a charming little enclave. Love the architecture of the University of Aberdeen. And St. Macar's Cathedral apparently is a must-see. A hidden gem. Exactly. Yeah. But outside of old Aberdeen, let's just say the city didn't quite live up to those expectations. <laughs> oh, no. What went wrong? The roads. They were not a fan. Really? Not even a little bit. They call them a confusing maze designed to rack up parking fines. Oh, no, that's the worst. They specifically mentioned bus lanes and even CO2 emissions detectors. Apparently, even if you're driving carefully, it's easy to get caught off guard. So basically, Scammerdine checks out. Well, that was their experience. Yeah. And the city center after dark. They painted a pretty grim picture. Definitely advise tourists to be careful. Okay, duly noted. Maybe those late night adventures are best saved for Edinburgh then. Because talk about contrasts, our source makes it seem like Edinburgh is Aberdeen's polar opposite. They said it's a city where history, culture, and beauty collide in the most wonderful way. Couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. And at the very heart of it all, Edinburgh Castle. Okay, iconic for sure. But what stood out to them about it? It wasn't just the panoramic views from Castle Rock, though. I mean, come on, those are incredible. It was more about the sheer history contained within those walls. You're really stepping back in time there. They said you could easily spend a whole day exploring Edinburgh Castle and still not see everything. Wow. What kind of stuff are we talking about? Everything. The Scottish Crown Jewels, the Great Hall, the dungeons. It's all there. Oh, the stories those walls could tell. But I have a feeling Edinburgh is more than just grand castles and views, right? You're absolutely right. They encouraged visitors to get a little lost, specifically in the city's closes. Yeah, there are these narrow, winding alleys that weave through Edinburgh's old town. Super atmospheric. Okay, atmospheric in a good way, or? Well, that depends. Let's just say they're basically synonymous with Edinburgh's ghost stories. They're steeped in history, but also a little bit eerie. I love that. Count me in. A little spooky history never hurt anyone. Then you'll love this. Yeah. They mentioned ghost tours that take you through those very closes. Okay, that's going straight on the itinerary. But for those of us who might not be chasing ghosts, what else does Edinburgh have to offer? Well, they raved about the Royal Mile. Ah, the Royal Mile. That's the heart of the city, right? Exactly. It connects Edinburgh Castle to the Palace of Holyrood House, and it's lined with shops, cafes, historical landmarks, you name it, it's probably on the Royal Mile. Okay, so it's a must-do just for the atmosphere alone. Absolutely, but especially during festival season. Oh, right. Edinburgh is known for its festivals. Big time. They specifically mentioned the Edinburgh Festival Fringe in the International Festival. Oh. Said during August, the city transforms into this global stage. Thousands of performers, artists, all that energy, it sounds electric. That's exactly how they described it. Amazing, what a range. From spooky closes to this explosion of art and culture, anything else we should add to the Edinburgh list? They absolutely loved Dean Village. Dean Village, tell me more. Imagine this. You cross a bridge over the water of Leith, leave behind all that city noise, and step into this tranquil oasis. Wait, hold on. An oasis in the middle of Edinburgh? That's exactly what they said. Old mill buildings, cobblestone streets, and the sound of the river. Okay, a little village vibe hidden away in the city. That's my kind of discovery. Edinburgh really does seem to have something for everyone. It truly does. It blends those iconic historical sites with these hidden gems so seamlessly. 
making me want to book a flight right now. Edinburgh does have a way of pulling you in, but before we completely write off Aberdeen, let's go back for a second. You're right, we should. They really weren't happy about those bus lanes. Scammerdeen, remember? Yeah, that stuck with them. But their experience isn't going to be everyone's experience, oh, right? Travel is so personal. What one person finds annoying, another person might think is, you know, part of the adventure. It's all about how you see it. So true. Okay, so, forgetting those parking tickets for a minute, what about Aberdeen stood out to you? Well, Dunatar Castle, for sure. That clearly made an impression. Even on our resident cynic, it seems. Makes sense. Hard to resist a castle on a cliff, right? Apparently not. But it's interesting, they also really liked old Aberdeen, called it, and I quote, a charming little enclave. Yeah, I can see that. It's got that university atmosphere, the old buildings. It sounds like a place where you could wander for hours. Right. They even specifically called out St. Macar's Cathedral. Said it was a hidden gem. Okay, see, Aberdeen does have those hidden gems. You just have to, you know, work a little harder to find them, maybe. There's something to be said for a city that doesn't reveal all its secrets right away. And honestly, being less touristy could be a good thing. Right? Yeah. You might get a more authentic experience. That's a really good point. It's easy to get caught up in those must-see lists. Sometimes the best travel moments are the unplanned ones. Exactly. A conversation with a local in a pub in Aberdeen could give you a totally different view of Scotland than any guided tour in Edinburgh. Totally agree. Okay, so we've got two sides to Aberdeen emerging here. The Scammerdeen bus lane woes, but also those hidden gems and the potential for something a little more off the beaten path making me rethink things a bit. But then again, Edinburgh just sounds magical. It does, doesn't it? And even though our traveler clearly loved Edinburgh, they even mentioned the captivating darkness of those closes, those narrow alleys, the ghost stories. It's like a whole other side to the city. Oh, I love that. I'm a sucker for a good ghost story, especially when you're in a place so steeped in history. It's like you can almost feel the past right there with you. Exactly. And Edinburgh's got those moments in spades, whether it's Edinburgh Castle itself, all those kings and queens, or those shadowy closes where you can't tell fact from fiction. It really captures the imagination. And then on top of all that history, you've got this whole other side of Edinburgh. The festival scene. Oh, yeah, they were blown away by that. Especially the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. They described it as this cultural melting pot. Theater, comedy, dance, all happening within a few blocks. It's amazing how Edinburgh can be both those things, you know? You this historical city, but also a hub for the arts. It speaks to this really dynamic culture. Edinburgh's holding on to its heritage while also embracing what's new. And for those looking for something a little quieter, there's always Dean Village. Right, their little oasis. Exactly. One minute you're in the thick of it on the Royal Mile, the next you're strolling by the river listening to the water, and it's all within the same city. That's pretty special. Edinburgh really does seem to have it all. History, beautiful scenery, a thriving art scene, even a peaceful village tucked away. But before we crown Edinburgh the winner, we need to talk about something crucial to any good trip. The food. Ah, uh, yes, food. That can make or break a travel experience. Mm. And luckily, both Aberdeen and Edinburgh deliver, although in different ways. Okay, I'm ready for this culinary adventure. What kind of foodie delights are we talking about? Well, they called Edinburgh a foodie's paradise. Bold statement. What makes them say that? They raved about the seafood, especially. Being a coastal city, it's super fresh. And they mentioned tons of Michelin-starred restaurants. Mm. Apparently, they're putting a modern spin on classic Scottish dishes. Okay, fresh seafood alone has me sold. I can already picture myself with a plate of oysters and some Edinburgh chips. Speaking of classic Scottish food, did they have anything to say about haggis? They did. They highly recommended trying it in Edinburgh, actually. They said that using fresh local ingredients makes all the difference. Apparently, it's way more delicious than its reputation might suggest. You know, I've always been curious about haggis, but a little scared, to be honest. You're making it sound tempting, though. That's what yeah. travel's all about, right? Stepping yeah. outside your comfort zone, trying new things. You never know what you might discover. Very true. Okay, so that's Edinburgh. What about Aberdeen? How does it compare food-wise? Well, they didn't go into as much detail, which maybe says something. But like Edinburgh, Aberdeen's on the coast, so there's definitely great seafood there, too. Makes sense. They did mention something called Cullen Skink. It's a creamy smoked fish soup. Sounded perfect for a chilly evening, you know. Oh, now that sounds fantastic. Okay, Cullen Skink is officially on my list, but it does sound like for sheer variety, Edinburgh might be hard to beat, at least based on this one experience. It does seem that way. But who knows, maybe Aberdeen has its own 
hidden culinary treasures waiting for those who are willing to explore a little. Right. Sometimes the best food is the stuff you find by chance, right? Tucked away down some little side street. Or maybe a local tells you about it. Exactly. And let's not forget about the whiskey. Our source said that both cities have amazing opportunities to visit distilleries and do tastings. Oh, of course. A whiskey tasting is a must-do in Scotland. Nothing like warming up with a wee dram and learning about how it's made. It's a whole experience in itself, and you can find it in both Aberdeen and Edinburgh. So Edinburgh might have the edge when it comes to sheer variety of food, but it sounds like both cities have that authentic Scottish cuisine covered. And obviously that incredible whiskey. Exactly. It comes down to this. Whether you're a huge foodie or just want to experience the local cuisine, both cities deliver. Okay, so we've wandered those city streets, peeked down spooky alleys, and even dreamt about cullen skink. But a real Scottish adventure, it's got to include some of that natural beauty, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And luckily for us, both Aberdeen and Edinburgh are like gateways to some incredible landscapes. Speaking of gateways, our source could not stop talking about Arthur's Seat in Edinburgh. And it's not just a hill, right? It's a volcano. An extinct one, thankfully. Still pretty cool. I mean, you climb to the top and boom, panoramic views of the city. Did they mention seeing the Firth of Forth from there? Oh yeah, they said on a clear day, you can even see the highlands. Wow. Okay, Edinburgh's really pulling ahead on the things to see list. But it's not just Arthur's Seat, right? Does it have other outdoor spots they liked? They did. Colton Hill was another one. You know, with all those monuments. I've seen pictures. Very cool. Very Edinburgh. Exactly. Good for a relaxed walk. Amazing views. And if you want to get out of the city a bit more, there's always the Pentland Hills, right? Just a short trip from Edinburgh and you're in the Scottish countryside. Perfect for a day trip, maybe a hike. It's amazing how much variety Scotland has, even in a relatively small area. It really is. You've got history, cities, beaches, mountains. It's all right there. Speaking of beaches... Our source also recommended a few day trips from Edinburgh. North Berwick really caught my eye. A cute little toastal town, beaches, the whole deal. Sounds perfect. And you know you can take a boat from there out to Bass Rock. Bass Rock. Tell me more. It's this island, essentially this giant rock covered in gannets, thousands of them. 